In this video, I am going to explain another important tool for image analysis that is Huff Transform. The Huff Transform is a technique which is used to find out different type of curves present in an image. So before I move or deep down into the mathematical details or into the algorithms of Huff Transform, the first thing that is need to be established is that Huff Transforms are applied on edge images because in edges we have already segmented out all the straight lines circles and different kind of curves so any curve that can be defined in a parametric form it can be found using half transform half transform can figure out that where that curve is which curve it is for example whether it is a spline it is a line it is an ellipse it is a disk what that curve is and where is that curve present. The utility of half transform comes from the fact that in industry, most manufactured parts have straight boundaries or circular or spherical boundaries. So to inspect such parts and to locate those parts, half transform is a very powerful tool. Additionally, this transform technique is relatively unaffected by noise and when I'm going to explain the algorithm, you'll see that how noise pixels or noisy data cannot affect the output of half transform. I'm going to give an example of line detection only and I'm going to point towards that how other type of curves can be found. So a line can be written in a parametric form in this fashion. Parametric form means that we are expressing line in two new parameters that is this r and this phi. This r and phi are nothing but the length of the normal to the line from the origin and the angle which this normal makes with the x-axis respectively. For example, if you are considering this line, then R would be this, this distance because this is the distance or the length of the normal from the origin to the line. And the angle which this normal is making with the x-axis is this one, so it would be phi. This R phi pair would be unique to this particular line only because if you change this line even a bit r phi pair is going to change for example if you draw a parallel line over here it will have same phi value but a smaller r value because the length of this normal is going to decrease now and if you draw a parallel line over here once again the value of r is going to change because the length of the normal would now be up till this point and if you change the angle of the line, for example, if you rotate this line at a new angle, for example, this one, now this new line would have a completely different normal. Therefore, its length might be different, but definitely its angle is going to be different. So for one particular line, there is only a unique R5 pair that is going to correspond to that line. So if you just know R and phi, you can figure out the complete line by plugging the X value and getting the Y value. So if in this equation, you are you already know r and phi and you plug in this x value you are going to get this y value and if you are plugging and if you plug this x value you are going to get this y value and similarly you can figure out a complete line over here therefore this equation signifies that if you have this r and phi then you can change this x i and you will get different y's and if you plot this x and y on a cartesian graph it will correspond to the line for which this r and phi pair is unique but now suppose that we don't know which r and phi pair is unique to the line. In fact, we don't know where the line is. But what we know about the line is we know some value of xi and yi that lies on the line. As in the start, I said that this technique would be performed or applied onto an edge image. In an edge image, we only have edge points, that is the points which are lying in a line or for example in a circle. So we know that what are the values of xi and yi, but right now we don't know 
what are the lines that are present in the image. So now we will consider r and phi as variables and point x i and y i as constants. So if we do this thing and we make x i and y i constant then we can sweep r and phi through different values. If we can sweep r and phi through different values then we can plot r and phi on an r phi space and we will get a sinusoidal curve. Now what this sinusoidal curve is representing? This is r and this is phi. So every point on this curve is representing a line that is passing through x i and y i point. For example, on x y axis, we have x i and y i point somewhere over here. There are infinite lines that will pass through this point. Each of the r phi pair represented on this sinusoidal curve is representing one of the line that is passing through this x i y i. For example, some pair of r phi will represent this line, some pair of r phi will represent this line, some pair will represent this line, some pair will represent this line and in the same fashion there are infinite lines all are passing through this x i y i point and they all will have different r phi values. Those different r phi pairs are represented by this sinusoidal curve. Now the main trick is over here. All the points which are collinear to this point will correspond to one common pair of r phi values. For example, if we have two more points which are collinear to our first point and plot r phi pair for all these three points, we, we are going to get three sinusoidal curves like this. Now this sinusoidal curve is representing all the lines that are passing through for example x1 comma y1 point. This sinusoidal curve is representing all the lines that are passing through x2 y2 point and this sinusoidal curve is representing all the lines that are passing through x3 y3 point. So there are infinite lines that are passing through these points but if these three points are collinear then there will be exactly one line that is passing through all these three points and that one unique line would be represented by a unique r phi pair. So what r phi pair is present in all these sinusoidal curves? Definitely it is this one. So this is the r phi value that is present in all three sinusoids. It means that the line which this r phi pair is representing is passing through all these three points. So in this graph you can see that all r phi pairs have been used exactly once. For example, this pair has been used once, this pair has been used once, this pair has been used once, this pair once and all other pairs have been used once except this one. This pair has been used thrice. So the pair which has been used the most would be used to define that this is the pair which is defining the line that is passing through all the points. Now since r and phi are variable we cannot have infinite values because for each and every point in the edge image we are going to draw sinusoids and if r and phi are continuous variables then it won't be possible for us computationally to draw all the sinusoids. So we need to discretize this r and phi. We know that the angle of the line can vary from 0 to 360 but after 180 till 360 the line will only be flipped and if you flip a line it will still remain the same. For example if you rotate this line by 180 degree you'll get the same line once again. So we are going to use values of phi in the range of 0 to 180 only and we are for example we can use a resolution of 1 degree so that we will have discrete 180 values and the value of the R and the value of the R can be limited 
computed by using the maximum distance from the image and the value of the r may be limited by using the maximum distance from the origin for example if this is a complete image and you consider that the origin is present over here then this is the maximum distance that any point can have from the starting point and this distance would be definitely column square plus row square whole under root additionally we will discretize r and suppose that we have and suppose that we have 300 different values of r and 180 different values of phi so the discretized r phi space will have 300 into 180 unique location and this discretized r phi space would now be represented by a two dimensional array which is called accumulator the name comes from the fact that we are going to accumulate the evidence that how many times a particular R5 pair has been used in an edge image. Now suppose that we have this line and we want to find this line using half transform. So the first point which we are going to consider is for example this one and for this point we are going to draw a sinusoid in a discretized R5 plane that is the accumulator. So we are going to mark all the locations or all the R5 pairs in the accumulator which are used for this point and we know that there are different lines that can pass through this point. So for all these lines and R5 pair will be marked in the accumulator. Similarly, we will come on to the next point, for example, this one. We are going to repeat the procedure and we are going to mark all the R5 pairs that are corresponding to some lines passing through this point. Then we are going to come to this point and once again repeat this process and we are going to mark all the R5 pairs that are corresponding to some lines passing through this point. And last Lastly, we are going to come to this for example the last point and perform the same procedure again and we are going to label in the accumulator all the R5 pairs that are that have been used. Over here we can see that one R5 pair that represents this line would be used four times whereas all other R5 pairs would be used only once. So in the accumulator you are going to get one, 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 one everywhere for example but you are going to get a four somewhere. So this four is going to represent an R and phi value that is corresponding to this line and you will know that this line appears in your image. Just bridging my discussion with the previous example, if you are considering this example, then suppose that this grid which is shown over here is the accumulator and all these values, these R and phi values, they have been used exactly once, but there is one value, for example, this one, which have been used thrice. So the value which has been used the most will represent a line that is present in your image. Therefore, at the end, we will look for the clusters in the accumulator. That is the R5 pair that have been used most of the time. And those R5 pairs will represent the lines in the image. The same methodology can be used to detect circles. So if we can express a circle in a parametric form like this, over here you can see that there are three variables a b and r so as in the case of line we had only r and phi we had a two dimensional accumulator but over here we have three variables so we are going to have a three dimensional accumulator rest of the procedure would be the same so some unique pair of r a and b will represent a circle and if in the accumulator some unique pair has been used quite a lot of time then that means that that particular circle appears in your image so in practical scenarios we can see that how half transforms can be used to detect lines. For example, in the image shown on the left side, lane automatic lane detection can be easily accomplished using half transforms where the half transform can easily figure out the lines drawn on the road. On the right side, you can see that half transforms can very effectively be used to figure out the rail tracks. In a similar fashion, circles can be found using of transforms quite easily. So the image shown in the center is the edge image and if you apply transform onto this edge image circles can easily be found. 